And now I am joined by Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson, the first African-American and woman to chair the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology. She's also the founder of the Diversity and Innovation Caucus in the House, and that's been a big subject of ours today. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us. Look, what we're trying to understand today and kind of put in front of the American people is the role that science plays in American advancement. And you play a role in shaping and sculpting those choices in science. So what is your North Star when it comes to thinking about America's science agenda and how it connects to this nation's welfare? Well, very honestly, we have to think about whether or not we are prepared. And so we have to start at the beginning to make sure that we have the brain power that we need to be the leaders in this nation, because I call this committee uh, the door to the future uh, for our country, because innovation is going to be the part that we have to not only catch up, but stay up and hopefully uh, keep funded. In order to do that, we have to look at the whole picture. We have to look at whether or not we are gaining enough scientists we have to look at whether or not they are going, uh, even before they go into the scientific areas, whether they have enough information, whether they are ready to enter into these areas. We have depended a great deal on immigrants uh, in our area, which we are very appreciative. So what frightens us is this administration's policy on immigration, because we have needed that input not only as role models for our young people here, but because we need that brain power. Uh, I have uh, interns at, to come from New Zealand and other places, Australia, uh, for my office. And I can tell you that they are really pretty bright and somewhat ahead of many of the interns that we get uh, from our colleges throughout the nation and our country. Well, what you're saying right now is very important, and I'll be candid with you. I haven't heard anybody make that case for a long time. You know, the last one, I, I co-wrote an article years ago with Robert Gates when he was head of Texas A&M around after 9-11 had occurred and said, look, if we cut off our, our uh, uh, you know, pathways from foreign countries to the U.S. educational institutions and research institutions, we're, we're undermining America because brains came from abroad. I, I am interested in this. Do your colleagues understand that? Is there a literacy in the House of Representatives about the importance of smart, bright people from the rest of the world coming here? Sometimes I wonder, but I say it all the time. Uh, the Science Committee, I, in my judgment, does not get the attention. Maybe it's not as noisy as some other committees. Uh, but we certainly don't get the attention as many of the committees that are a little bit louder and a little bit more, um, I guess, and, and more um, discussion that is not so pleasant. However, we work very, very hard in this committee to work across the aisle so that we can keep the attention on the scientific background. So we try very hard to find the best witnesses that we can find anywhere in the world, but certainly all over the country. And so we get a chance to, to see what we have, what's in the pipeline, and what we need to do. Well, I know part of your um, responsibility is to look at institutions and, and authorize uh, uh, spending on institutions like the National Science Foundation and like NASA. Uh, and there may be other pieces uh, of that in the puzzle as well. Are those institutions getting the funding and resources that American citizens deserve? We try very hard, but I, in my judgment, no, they are not getting not near the worth that they have for this society. Uh, we struggled the, the whole time that I have been on this committee to make sure uh, that space gets its money because it's been the most important research that we've ever done in the history of this country uh, in terms of outcomes. However, it's hard to explain that. We have people on our committee that don't even know the value of, of, of space research. And certainly if they don't know it on my committee, they don't know it on any other committee to amount to much. So it's, it's, it's inside education as well as education to the general public. 
And I think that's why we have a difficult time trying to create a good pipeline for scientists and especially minorities, because it's not really, it doesn't get the attention it needs in this country. You know, it, it doesn't compete with hip hop. It doesn't compete with sports. Uh, but but the, the, the value to our nation is unsurpassed. Well, I'm a science junkie, so I'm very much uh, into it. Um, you know, and, and let me ask you, when you mentioned uh, minorities, you mentioned women, you mentioned kind of the, the inclusion package of with this is so important, is, is what do you think we can do more of? Because, you know, we're already seeing research that company boards of directors that don't have, uh, you know, gender balance, that don't have ethnically, it's not just ethnic diversity, it's life diversity, have blind spots. So that diversity actually has a bottom line that's better than non-diverse places. And, and I guess my question is, what do you think the, your Capitol Hill can do, or what do you think we all can do to essentially deal with diversity in a much, much more real and inclusive way than we are today? Well, we absolutely need more publicity. We've tried very hard to address it with, with the legislation and the committee. Uh, ever since I've been on the committee, we've tried very hard to think of some very meaningful ways to do research and determine what we need to do. All the way back when I first got on the committee and Congresswoman Morella and I uh, became the women that were started to look at gender biases for these areas of, of, across the board in the STEM uh, curriculums. Mm. And, we've, and I've continued that because we've seen very little improvement. Uh, and yet, we know that the growing population uh, is going to be both female and minority. And that's the population we really need to impact, although we need everybody we can get because we're seeing a little drop off even with our Anglo males. Uh, we, without the international influence, we would slow down a lot, I believe. Because look at all of our research universities. Uh, hardly any of them are without some outstanding leadership that was not necessarily born in this country. And, and, and almost in every level, whether or not it's physical scientists mm. or whatever, we are really dependent upon societies that emphasize intellectual development and societies that depend upon the STEM curricula. I think a lot of it has to do with student loans and the cost of education, because what I'm finding is that a lot of students are getting these simple curricula in order to get out of school as quickly mm. as possible. Mm. Well, it's one thing to have a bachelor's degree, but it's another thing to have the skills to, that we need for today's world. I think that was very important insights. Let me just ask you, finally, are you concerned at all about the climate we seem to have today where science, scientists, folks like Dr. Fauci uh, seem to be political, politicized, that, 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 you know, that, that some people you know, around the country are saying you know, expertise is a thing of the elites and that you know, research and scientific method take too long and we need shortcuts. Are, are you worried about that evolution in America's discussion about science? It has been very stressful to see how Dr. Fauci has been treated during this time. You know, scientific breakthroughs just don't come overnight. And if they're gonna come with credibility, the time, the effort, and the dollars must be invested. Uh, I totally agree with Dr. Fauci, and I know he's hampered from some time always speaking what he believes. And that's unfortunate because it shows a disrespect for the scientific evidence. And we try to strict, strictly adhere uh, to scientific principles on this committee, especially uh, since I've been chair. Now, but just before I became chair, we had lots of difficulty along those lines. It became very political uh, in the last chair. It hasn't been that way with every chair of the committee, but the struggle to try to respect scientific evidence is, is really very hard right now. 
will represent. I, I cannot hmm. say that I can pinpoint what it is, but I think it's a lack of knowledge as to the importance. You know, we went through a lot of research to get to the polio vaccines. We went through a lot of research uh, to get through all of the diseases that hampered life long ago that we've forgotten how fortunate we are to have those preventions. Measles, mumps, whooping cough, all of that pneumonia really limited our lives. But going through the research and developing remedy and developing immunizations has really caused us to have a better quality of life. We are now being challenged politically about immunizations, which we have benefited from since the 30s. And, and it's, it's, it's difficult and it's frustrating, but I want to encourage our scientists to stick to the scientific evidence. We've got, we've got now to field test to get a vaccine for the coronavirus. It, it is going to be challenging because for the first time, minorities should be included in this field testing. And a lot of suspicion has cropped up over the years because they have not yet maximize what they could have in making these various tests. And now we're at a point where they're more vulnerable. So we've got to make sure they have enough confidence in order to get this vaccine. I think it's the only answer. We're not going to be able to pay ourselves out of this until we get a remedy. Well, Representative Eddie Bernice Johnson, um, I really appreciate your thoughts on this today. I should mention to our audience that the, the, you're the dean of Congressman of, of Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico. And if you scratch beneath the surface of these states, they have huge science investment. They have national labs. Uh, there, there's an incredible science presence in each of those states. I used to work for Jeff Bingham of New Mexico, uh, and I think he would agree yes. with every word you said. So, th Representative Johnson, thank you so much for joining us today, uh, and we look forward to having you again uh, here with us in the future. Thank you very much for the opportunity.